catching up on the flash yeah yes. yes what do you think i think um if we bump past allegra's episode uh which you know what it was serviceable mm-hmm. it, it allowed her to shine um as someone who doesn't really care for allegra's character it did not it did not pull me into the story but if you're an allegra fan the writing was fine it was it yeah. was actually really good yeah, that's the interesting thing. I really enjoy when they spotlight these characters instead of trying to shoehorn them into other stories. I would much rather watch an Allegra-centric episode about her trying to overcome something rather than watching her and Chester argue about sandwiches in a grief-stricken episode about something else. That didn't do it for me. This did do it for me. Much better episode. Not one of the greatest episodes of The Flash. Probably not one we'll be talking about when the show's over, but it was a solid episode and the secondary story with Barry and all was great as well. But I, from an Allegra standpoint, really liked that. Yeah, I, I'm, I just, I think it did, it did more for her character than what we have gotten this season by trying to like, like you said, shoehorn her in the plots that don't quite fit. Um, I think that, I like that we went back to the um, uh, house. I think that's how you pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Um, in that gang and, and what it did to her life and, and how they were pulling her out. I didn't quite, the one, the hokey thing, well, there, there are a few hokey things, but mm-hmm. what the major hokey thing was um, the power of journalism defeated these bad guys. And I was like, why would they care that they've been, their names have been exposed? If they're trying to kill someone, they'll just kill somebody. That let, that to me, I think they did such a great job of building up this like, balloon of energy throughout the whole episode and that just felt like someone popped the balloon right in the last minute it really killed the moment because Allegra suddenly did this entire like Captain Marvel like uh, glowing moment and then you're telling me she wasn't strong enough to take down these two henchwomen and like that just felt like the show was like we've got this incredibly powerful character but she can't be more powerful than the Flash so like let's weaken her it uh, that 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 let the wind out of the sails for me the the episode was doing such a great job and up until that point but then oh no, these two like ruthless henchwomen who don't live normal lives anyway are suddenly scared about the fact that their names are out in the public. And I'm like, why would they be scared about that? So Allegra is going to let them run off and disappear so that they can come back in the future? Nah, didn't buy that. Yeah, no, no. Especially because um, Sunshine is like, you can't defeat me. I was like, girl, you just pop in and out. Like, the, what? <laughs> how, how can she not defeat you? I don't understand. She just, but um, the power sequence for Allegra was really great. Um, seeing her in a leader take charge in a leadership role um, at Central City Media was great. I, I will say, though, her being like, I shouldn't, maybe I didn't deserve to be the leader when Iris left. I was like, she did not leave. She's stuck in a still force, but okay. <laughs> Props to you for remembering about her because nobody else does. No, I mean, it really does feel like this woman is on a, a, a story somewhere and they're just waiting for her to come home. I think it does not feel like she is trapped uh, by interesting enough to just hop over the next episode. It doesn't feel like she's trapped by the forces, which with the forces being against Barry, I'm confused. I don't know where this is going. I don't know. Why is Dion bad all of a sudden? I, I don't get that. Um, uh, yeah, again, I, this review is going to be very much like the, the last few. Excellent episode. Amazing storytelling. Doesn't make sense within the wider story. Um, yeah, look, I'm going to leave the Iris stuff to the side because I don't like what they did when she was on screen. And I certainly don't like that they've left her off screen. But from an episode standpoint, I mentioned it earlier, this felt like an old-fashioned Arrowverse episode. We got both reverse flashes in the same episode. When has that ever happened before? It was great to see Tom Cavanaugh back. It was even greater to see Matt Letcher back. I hope I pronounced that right. He he finally returned on Legends last season, so it was really cool to see him back here. Um, I I got connected to the redemption arc for the reverse flash. I didn't think we'd get that. That was really cool. Um, uh, I really like Fast Track such funky music whenever she went evil as well um great character and uh what else uh the diggle moment that no one saw that coming like oh my goodness that that was a nice surprise uh and to see him interact with uh, the reverse flash we hadn't had a scene with like since season one excellent it was i think so i love that the core of this uh, this episode which i don't think they sort of revealed it until towards the end was love 
Mm -hmm. um, and the power of love and what it can help you overcome. Like for Diggle, it was him deciding not to be Green Lantern, which I know some people are going to be like upset that he's not going to be, but I think it did service his character for them to tie up his story like that um, in the in the universe where he chose his family. Because everyone knows you have to give them up. Like, because um, you... Um, now, I will say I'm not like the, I am not a Green Lantern expert, but uh, just to ask you, Michael, you do, once you adopt the um, the mantle, you're flying all across the universe. There's no time to have a family, correct? Yeah, you're part of the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, so there's loads of Green Lanterns all over the universe that you're sent out in assignments to protect different planets and all and whatnot. There are multiple different Green Lanterns. We know Ryan Reynolds played, why is his name escaping me? I'm delete this because I should know that um, uh, uh, we know Ryan Reynolds played Hal Jordan there we we'll insert this version instead we know Ryan Reynolds played the Hal Jordan version we thought John Diggle was being set up to play the John Stewart version because I think his family's married into General Stewart's family so there's your connection John Diggle Stewart and uh, I'm conflicted about that because Arrow ended teasing that he was finally going to become the Green Lantern. He picked up the box. Then David Ramsey signed that deal that allowed him to appear in episodes of Batwoman, Supergirl, Legends, Superman at Lois, and The Flash. And across every single one of those, except Legends of Superman at Lois, it furthered that arc. He had the headaches on The Flash. On Batwoman, he was in a hospital in Gotham City trying to get the headaches looked at. On Supergirl, that was for a different story, but he did say, worlds await which is a Green Lantern reference. They've been building this story across the Arrowverse for the last two years, only to turn around and have them deny it instead. It's great and it would have worked fine in a show itself, but I feel like they invested far too much time in this story just to say, yeah, we're not going to do that in the end. And I think now this is to suggest that they're pivoting into the just as you direction because John Diggle can't be Green Lantern and lead a school of superpowered individuals at the same time. So I feel like that they've... they've they, the Green Lantern thing was decided at a different time and they've decided to move into the Just As You thing. So the, the Flash episode last night was him finally choosing against Green Lantern so that he could go choose his family and then go in the Just As You direction. I'm conflicted about it. It makes sense for the character, but because they decided to tell the story across six different shows, just to pull the rug out from under us two years later and say, yeah, we're not going in that direction, feels like a little bit of a letdown for me. Mm, See, so when you put it like that, I understand. I think for as a fan of the Airverse who did not watch all of the shows um, or continued all of the shows, um, I haven't, I've seen the hopping, but I haven't seen it in, in the way that you have. So for me, it didn't feel like a two year journey. It felt like a, like I remember them talking about it in 2020. It came up in some of the episodes that they've aired so far in other Airverse shows. And oh, now he's made his decision. But if you have been on the two year journey with him and then they're like, hmm, we're not gonna go in the Green Lantern direction. So sorry, you guys. It does, it would be a letdown. I do think though, with it being a letdown, at least the way that they tied it up was good story. Like it made sense for him. Um, and the, the fact that they managed to squeeze that into what, five minutes of, of screen time? And it yeah. still be compelling. Um, just spoke to like the skill of the writing for this episode. The same with like you said, the redemption arc for um, for Eobard, uh, which him and Mina, I did not expect um, that to to happen, um, but I liked it. And it seems like Fast Track Labs is where you go for love because um, Bart also fell in love with someone yeah. who worked at Fast Track Labs. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. But there's so it's every time they say there's a reverse flash out there in the timeline, like how many times are you rewriting this? Because he was the villain in season one, he died, he was erased from existence, and yet they've continually found ways to bring him back. Not only that, they find ways to bring both versions of the character back. I didn't understand any of what was the explanation for which reverse flash this one is. Uh, apparently, it was the Flashpoint version, who then was uh, taken in by the Black Flash and made to serve the timeline, which is why we saw him in Legends of Tomorrow. And because he redeemed himself serving the timeline, he was dropped back in the present over on the Flash so he could live a life of happiness without the memory of his evil life. That's a lot to buy in like 40 minutes, but like <laughs> we'll is. roll with it. We'll roll with it. But um, they did a good job in 40 minutes, I will say that. The writing in this episode was very, very impressive which is why it bothers me that this season's full of impressive standalone episodes that don't go together in the slightest. No, because I just, I don't, I don't understand why this was the choice. 
Um, I, I, I love being able to praise the show for the storytelling that it gives us, but I'm not someone who can be like, these are not, you can't have a whole season of self-contained episodes. Um, especially when like you put two, your two major storylines on ice. Iris is on ice and we're acting as if she's not. And then you have the Caitlin storyline, which furthered at the end of this episode, which I did actually enjoy that Mark called her and was like, mm-hmm. we can, we could actually save Frost. We can get Frost back without having to use the mirror gun. I'm excited to see where they go with that story. I thought that that um, insert into like the last two minutes really worked for this for this episode mm-hmm. i just um but how are we sticking the landing better with caitlin than we are with iris why is barry out here calm like i just do not understand like he used like he even had a line about how iris is his lightning rod and i was like your lightning rod is stuck in the still force but you're acting as if she's on assignment i don't understand i'm telling you if we don't if if this season doesn't end with the still force versus frank and frost I, I i am not accepting anything else because that feels like where they're heading towards here and like the we've two episodes left and it's t- t- a two-part finale to tie all this up and i hope the frost storyline produces something and i hope we finally get iris back and just like forget this time sickness ever existed can we not erase it from existence please because it's just been the biggest waste of time and it undermines every single character on the show it does. I just don't. And I hate that, that, like, every time we talk about how great the episode was, we also then have to talk about how it's not fitting into the overall season eight plot. Um, and then I guess talk about Cecile. Cecile was fine this episode. I liked her level up. I don't understand why she is now becoming a crime fighter. Um, but I do think it's interesting and that she is now able to move um, other people's emotions um, on to someone else. Like that was a really cool um, move for her. And another note, I don't know why baby Jenna exists. I've asked this every season since she, since she came to be. They never sew this child. They bring her up randomly. And now she's going to kindergarten. And I was like, wait, she's fine. I, I, <laughs> I just did not remember. They've done nothing with her. And I feel like maybe they're giving Cecile a standalone story now since Joe's leaving next season. So that maybe they have her do, off doing her own vigilante thing. And I mean, like, unexpected, but I can roll with it. I do like Cecile more than other people do. I just don't like when they give her corny stories. This doesn't seem corny, so I can roll with it and see where it goes. Um, but yeah, it feels like she's going to need more of her own stuff going forward since Joe's not going to be part of the show. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with it. I just want better explanation for what's happening. I actually, I'm fine with Cecile. I like Cecile. I just don't like when um, they treat her the way that they do Chester and Allegra, where she's shoehorned into things, mm-hmm. where they have her explaining other people's emotions in ways that she doesn't need her powers for. Um, but other than that, I think that she is was a really good addition to the show when mm-hmm. she's used properly. Uh, I just don't think they always use her character properly. Uh, I'm a little nervous for the two-part season finale. I'm not going to lie. Not just because I'm wondering what they're going to do with Iris, but also because I'm not sure how they're going to tie these at loose ends up because I really don't want to go into season nine with more time sickness or um, with um, an extended plot about the forces. We've done the forces now for two seasons. Like if they're bad, um, then just figure out a way to end it at the end of, of season eight because they keep going from oh we're misunderstood to we're bad to now our Barry and Iris who are like our parents have to save us like Barry calling the speed force speed force Nora through me um, yeah. this episode because he hasn't referred to her that way I know is it speed force Nora is it mom is it is it a daughter I don't I don't know what they want us to call these people um I think the force storyline was a misfire I think it's been a misfire ever since we've had it um but I will say this before we fit, wrap up an episode focused solely on the characters and even those original characters that were only guests, like the original Reverse Flash, that had more heart in it than most of the season. So I hope if season nine is the last one, we get more stories like that fo- focused around what the Flash was rather than what it's become because this whole force malarkey, this whole uh, time sickness stuff, it's all been a big bust and yet the show can still produce some hidden gems like this one. So I hope to see, it's it's on a good track now and I hope now that we have Iris back, it'll stay on it. So I'm hopeful for the season finale. I'm not expecting it to be among the best finales the show's ever done, but I do have hope that if season nine is the last one, we can continue to go in the right direction because it's getting there slowly. 
I just hope it actually does get there. Same. Put your leads at the front of the storyline, please. It's right. <laughs>